Hello, welcome to Naresh Technologies. This is Sudhaka Sharma. In this video session, we are going to discuss about validations in ASP.NET MVC. So, we will create an uh, MVC application and we will see how validations are handled in ASP.NET MVC. So, for that, we have to know some basic points that uh, ASP.NET MVC validations, validations are defined are defined by using validation annotations validation annotations so mvc provides system.web.mvc this provides a set of uh, annotations and uh, at the same time system.component model model.data annotations will provide some set of attributes which are used for handling validations in MVC. System web MVC provides an attribute called remote and uh, component data model annotations. It provides the options like required, like compare, range and uh, regular expression and uh, string length length. These are all the validation annotations available in ASP.NET MVC. So, we can use these annotations to validate the values. So, we have to make sure that contradictionary and unauthorized data is not get stored into the database. For that, we need validations. And uh, in ASP.NET MVC, validations, validations are defined are defined at model level model level generally the validations are defined in asp.net web forms at the page level by using the controls whereas in mvc the validations are defined at model level a model will verify the values before it sends into the database and very important is asp.net MVC from the version 5 have introduced an obtrusive validation. Actually, it ASP.NET framework 4.5 uses this unobtrusive mode and uh, the validations that are used from ASP.NET MVC 5, they use unobtrusive validation. Unobtrusive validation is uh, nothing but validations, validations use a jQuery plugin, jQuery unobtrusive plugin, unobtrusive validation plugin. This plugin makes the validations both client side and server side. So, the, it enables a jQuery plugin that uh, handles the validations both client side and server side. So, we are going to learn how to handle these validations both client and server side. So, to do this first we will take a look of an entire application how to create an application so that we can define validations into that application. First step what I am doing here is I am creating a new database here. In SQL Server, we are creating a new database. Let us uh, name this as some MVC DB, okay. And uh, in this MVC DB, I am adding a new table and uh, let us define some fields into this table like uh, user name, uh, user ID. User ID will be a varchar just like an uh, unique ID taken by every user. So, let us set this user ID as primary key. Yeah. Then user name. So, it will be a varchar. Password. So, varchar. Let us add a confirm password. Password. Okay. Varchar. And uh, we will put 
age, so an integer and email, so that is also an worker and uh, mobile, let us put it is also an worker because mobile uses a format of mobile like plus 9, 1 and 10 digit number. So, then we will verify the format of mobile, we will restrict the format for the mobiles. So, I just created a database table with some fields. So, and I need to make sure that when user registers, so he his data is completely not contradictionary data. That means, exactly the data that we are expecting is sent from the user. We will validate all these fields at our model level and see how it can be uh, verified whether the contradictionary data is coming or not. So, I will save this table as TBL register. Okay. So, we created a database MVCDB and uh, we created a table, so with TBL register and with some fields configured here. Now, I need to create an MVC application to interact with this data. So, how to interact with the data with entity framework, without entity framework, we discussed in our previous sessions, you can go through that. So, let us take a fast look of how we can handle this. First, in my application, in order to interact with the data, let us go into the web config and add the connection string. I am adding a connection string to connect with the database. So, connection strings. So, add name. So, let us say users connection. Okay, fine. And uh, provider data.sql client and uh, connection string data source. So, let us say local and initial catalog. So, initial catalog is MVC DB user ID and password fine. After configuring, I want to use entity framework. The connection string name is uh, users connection and I want to use MVC framework, uh, entity framework to communicate with the database. So, first step, I am going to references and uh, manage NuGet packages and install entity framework. So, let us uh, install entity framework. Yeah, I selected entity framework, install and uh, accept the terms. Entity framework is installed into the project now. Yeah, once the entity framework is ready, first step here, let us go to the models folder and add a new class. This should map to my database table. I will give the name as a register. Okay. And this register has to map to the database table. So, I need some data annotations. So, using system component model data annotation schema and uh, I am using system component model data annotations. Now, I need to map this class to a table called TBL register. register okay. So, here we, this is our database table TBL register, we have to map to the TBL register. In this, we need to map to all these fields defined in entity framework. So, first going to be, so string because it is an wildcat type, user id get and set. And uh, actually, this user id is the primary key to designate the primary key, you will you can define the attribute key. So, let us add a key for that. Next step and I need to match with username, password, confirm password. So, public string, uh, so username get set and uh, string password and get set and uh, confirm password, password get set and uh, we need another field uh, age. So, int and it is a nullable type age, yeah, get set. And next we need email, string email, get set 
and uh, we have a string mobile and get set fine these are all the fields that are configured in the database table and we are writing a model class to map to the table okay however we need to restrict these fields according to the requirements that we are going to see later next step is initially we need a context class to handle communication with the table then uh, I am adding another class into this now let us name the class as uh, the same name as or you can say so users context that is the class name this users context is going to be using our data dot entity and uh, it should inherit so db context base and uh, we define a user context constructor this constructor how to call the base class constructor so base and it has to pass the connection string name i given the name as users connection now it should use a db set db set for communicating with the database db set db set name is register and uh, i will say the name as register table register table so we are going to get and set the values into register table by using this db set so users connection will enable connection with the database and uh, the db set called tbl register table is responsible for interacting with the registration table okay now once the model class context class is ready this context class object is used to connect with the data source and uh, register table to interact with the registration table okay fine now a model models are ready we need to create a controller to interact with this so i will add a controller i will add a controller by name users controller okay in this users controller i have to design in the users controller i will design an action called register this register action have to provide a ui so that i can interact with the table so i need to design a ui to interact with the table and that that ui should contain all the options to handle our validations still we haven't defined any validations first we will see how do we define validations for our data then we will see how do we create a ui for this so that we can interact with the data with some validations that we will continue in our next session thank you mm -hmm.